I do not own Star Trek, or any of the related characters. Star Trek, is a mark owned by Paramount. This story is a work of fanfiction and is for entertainment only. I am not making profit from this story. This is a tribute. All rights of Star Trek belong to Paramount. This fanfiction takes place between the second and third movies of the Kelvinverse. Star Trek Reloaded. Chapter 6. A Complicated Conspiracy. In the days that followed, a strange group of conspirators often met in that small hotel. Uhura was soon converted to the new venture. Scotty had no problem following his captain, but preferred to keep his ridge shape head, alien friend in the dark. Bones, as usual, caused quite a few problems. You are a bunch of crazy people and, no, I don't want to hear anything else. Playing with time is reckless and then, and then, but, going back, let's consider, would it be possible to ensure that my wife, my ex-wife, never gets those holophotos? Yes, well, you know. After 15 days, eight people were ready to follow Notby. In addition to the two Spocks, Kirk and McCoy, Uhura, Scott, Sulu and Chikov had also joined without delay. The Spocks had calculated this to be the minimum crew required to operate a starship, the Enterprise. But thoughts had not turned to the NCC-1701 who orbited on their heads. It's the only possibility. We cannot get away from Earth by stealing the fleet flagship with impunity. Old Spock's voice was no longer as firm and decisive as it once was, so that certain statements sounded strange and weakened to the ears of the listeners, however no one was fooled. That elderly Vulcan could still teach them all. Scott returned to the attack. Sir, that vessel is extremely crude. I dare say almost. He gasped in disgust. Analog. And, above all, has never really flown. On that vessel I successfully faced a five-year mission. Spock looked the engineer straight in the eyes but without any challenge. He knew how to convey the force of truth and this was enough for him. The Scotsman looked confused for a moment, only to immediately get back to the point. Ambassador, let's recap. We are talking about what was supposed to be the new Enterprise, built in orbit and ready to enter service in the very days in which Nero appeared for the first time, killing Kirk's father, etc. etc. And the information obtained from the sensors that had scanned Nero's ship stopped the launch, proposing a total redesign which, many years later, saw completion in our Enterprise. We all know the story. Thanks, Scotty. The engineer turned his head towards Kirk and gave him a smug smile. Thanks, Captain. Anyway, this old Enterprise, Ambassador, is practically the same one that you used in your time. It has currently been abandoned for many years in storage area 47, in orbit around Venus. Curiously, from the data I have recovered, she appears to be kept in perfect condition. Venus, the sun will have discolored the hull. Everyone turned to look at McCoy who, putting on a strange face, raised his arms slightly and opened the palms of his hands in the direction of his interlocutors. Okay, okay, I'll shut up. Young Spock intervened. Getting to Venus won't be a problem, nor will getting onto that ship. The real trouble will come when we put it into operation and leave orbit. The entire fleet will be on our tail. So why not steal our Enterprise? It's the fastest ship and no one will be able to reach us. Scott looked triumphant with this last statement. The first officer shook his head. You are not aware of the Omega-13 protocol. The engineer remained frozen. What the hell is an Omega-13 protocol? Spock, the elderly Spock, intervened in the conversation. When I returned to fly with the refitted Enterprise, Starfleet inserted a code into each of its ships, which could be activated remotely, allowed to take control of any ship by another Federation vessel. It was a deterrent against the possible capture of ships by hostile forces. Obviously the elite of the fleet, therefore only the best captains, had access to this very secret list of codes which proved to be quite useful to us when fighting against our con. Scott looked impatient. 
I don't understand what relevance this has to us. Well, we already have that code, in all the ships. Not Bay discovered it easily by breaking into the Federation network which, apparently, is rather easy for a 30th century hacker to crack. Said the young first officer. You couldn't have known and even the... The elderly ambassador hesitated. Your Captain Kirk, apparently, was still unaware of it. Furthermore, he would specify. It was Chekhov who spoke, badly understood due to his very strong accent. That the cause cannot be modified nor is it possible to exclude them. At least not without expelling the ship's nucleus, from what he read from the report of Captain Nob. Fascists. McCoy raised a fist to the sky. The Federation is deviating from its original directives. It is unthinkable that such decisions are made in the dark of its people. What do they think, that a self-referential oligarchy could one day take power and Restrain yourself, Leonard. Young Spock said in a low voice. Doctor. The Vulcan of the future almost smiled. You make me feel at home. 